Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Outlook. In this module, I want to have a look at the calendar and the calendar features. So on the screen, I've got a calendar. Across the top on the home tab, you've got lots of different tools that you can use to manipulate your calendar. The first bit I want to have a look at is these different views. So at the moment I'm on week, which has got every day of the week, including the weekends. We've got work week, knocking Saturday and Sunday off, then day view and month view, whichever you find more suitable as a view for you. Scheduling views is where you've got uh, multiple people working and you want to know whether they've got anything on a particular time in the week or month. So I've put it back to the week view. Now to create an appointment, it's, it's as simple as finding a timeline and double clicking, or you can go up to the top and click on new appointment or new meeting. And you've got, if you've got Microsoft Teams, Office 365, you can create a Teams meeting. So I'll do that in a second, but I'll just double click on this space and it's it's picked the timeline for me. So I'll call this a training event and it, location will be Bradford. So you see when you type in that, it comes up with suggestions. There's two there, so I'll put that one. That's the one I want. And then I just have loads of options across the top. So I can categorize this. I'll put this as a training category, which I've got colored red if you go down to all categories you can create your own change these ones or add new ones or rename those i'll just rename that one training and it's not an all-day event so an all-day event is an event whereas this is an appointment so it's got a time frame you've got a recurring option there if you want this to be recurring weekly say and because I've selected this, now it's showing on my calendar. If anybody's looking at my calendar through the shared option, they would see me as being busy. You've got these other options in there that you can set. You've got meeting notes, um, Teams meeting, if you want to do a Teams meeting, and you can invite people to this meeting. All these features are available across the top. And this bit on the right there, you've got, I can set this to private. What that will do is stop people looking at what you're doing. They won't see that title. They'll just see that you're busy. So they won't know it's a training event. They'll just see you You are busy. Then you've got high and low importance. Tags if you want. You can dictate um, and your voice will type out. Whatever you, whatever you say will be typed out in this area on the meeting. So I'll just save that one for now. There it appears. Now, if you decide that you need to uh, adjust this, you can double click back into it, or you can just sit your mouse on the bottom there and, and make that a, a little bit bigger. So I've extended the timeline. You can also copy this if you wanted that to be on Friday as well. I don't have to do the whole thing. I can just move it to Friday. But if I want it to be Friday and Thursday, I can do this. So I'm moving it, but now I'm holding my control key down. You can see a little plus come on the screen there. Now I'm letting go of my mouse and it's copied that event. Now to delete an event, you can just press delete and it will disappear. And obviously you've got undo. If you didn't mean to do that, you can undo that event. Now looking down this left hand side, you can see that I've got two different time frames. I've got the UK and I've got Spain active. So if you're working across the European continent or in the US in different time zones, you can have those time zones displayed down this left hand side. Now to do that, you need to go into options. So I'm going to options and calendar options is where you need to go. And then you scroll down to the part that says time zones. And there's a title for the UK one. So you can see it behind these boxes there. And that's the UK time. And then the second one, Spain. So there's Madrid, that's Spain timeline. It's plus one from UK time. And you've got an option of doing a third timeline, but that's then starting to get a bit confusing, but you can, and you can also swap the time zones around. So they, um, these swap places, but that's how you put that time zone on there. So I'll just cancel that off. Now, over on this left hand side, you've got some mini previews of calendars. If I click on any date, I'll quickly go to that date. So it's showing me that week. 
But if I if I click on a date, let's click on the fourteenth. That's today, and then hold my control key down and click on another date, and then another date, and then another date. What you're seeing is different dates coming in to this view. So if I go back into week view, that's probably a bit better. And I'll just do that again. So I'll click on to a date and do I want to look at that one. So there's Wednesday the 21st, come on the top there. If I click on control key down again and click on the fifth. So now you've got Wednesday the fifth coming in there. So you can you can set this up to show it however many dates you want. And if you want just to look at two weeks, you can look at two weeks like that. So I just highlighted them. And then those two weeks are showing side by side, one above the other. And then as soon as you click off that, it'll go back onto whatever view you've got at the top. So I'll put this back onto month view. So that is how you create a, a appointment or an event. And that's how you can um, copy and move them. And that's how you can select different dates. Now, if I move this whole window across to make more space, what you'll get is more of these. So you're getting a bit more of a forecast. So on a laptop, this is quite um, restrictive due to the to what you can see. But on a on a large monitor, you could have a whole array of calendars showing uh, on there. I've got I can reduce this or move it up and down as well. So I'll just take that one back. Just so it sits like that. Now, if I um, want a team meeting, if I double click. And let's say this is training in Derby. And I didn't use the location finder. I'll categorize this as red. So it's got red again. You can actually do that in conditional formatting settings on the view settings. So it automatically goes red, um, on the, not on this screen and the previous screen. But if I now say I want this to be a team meeting, it gives you options here of who's required. So if I just send an email to myself that I'm required, but you can see everything's there for you to join this team meeting when this is sent. So I'll just send this and then you can see it's already come on there and I will get an email in my inbox and it I will respond. And then if I go back into this, you can see no responses have been received for this meeting yet so i've not opened that email i've not responded to it so i'll just close this down so if i go to the email my email and just refresh that screen so i've got an email there i've got conditional formatting on this uh, to go red and large if it's a training event but you can see what you get so i will accept that and i'll just send the response I don't want to edit it so I'll send the response and if I go back down to my calendars so I'm in a different account so that's my calendar there but I'm in a different account and if I double click on that again and it's not updated it that, that will update um, shortly I'll just wait for that other calendars down this left hand side if I click on that calendar so I've now got two calendars um, if I open that one up, which were overlaid, this is what this arrow does. It just overlays. So they're both sitting next to, on top of each other, which is quite cluttered. So you might not want that one. So I'll take that one off and let's just put UK holidays on. And that one is now sitting overlaid as it's called. So you can see that the holidays are already there. Good Friday, Easter day, etc. Easter Monday. So the holidays are already on this calendar. If you don't want them overlaid, you can have them like so. I'll take that one off. Now, in calendars, you've got the option to add a calendar. So from a dress book, you know, you can select somebody from there. You can share a calendar, share. You've only got one there to share. And then it gives you these options. So you can let people see or you can let them edit. If you give full permissions, somebody else can actually manage your 
calendar. I'm not going to do that for anybody. Click OK to that. You can create your own calendar. So down here we've got lots of calendars and there's Teams calendars. All these are calendars from Microsoft Teams. I'll just tick that on. There's not a lot going on on there. So you can have quite a few different calendars and you can manage if you've got permissions. So the person's giving you permissions to edit. You can sort of sit editing and giving appointments to any of these people if you so wish. And if you just right click on there, you can do a new calendar or you've got the option at the top there. So you can create calendars for if you do football training or things like that, you can just create a calendar for your football training and have it in this list and you just tick it on and off when you don't want to on when you want to use it and off when you don't want to use it. So that is um, how you create an appointment and how you manage your calendars um, across the top. When you go into an appointment, let's just go back into this one or click on it. So the meeting tab becomes active on the top there. So I'm not even in the appointment, but you've got um, this option here, meeting notes. So if I click on that, it's going to start up um, one note so I can actually share this. This is going to be a Teams meeting, so I could share this with everybody who's on that meeting. But just for this example, I'm just going to click on this option, which will open up OneDrive, not OneDrive, OneNote. And that one there, general info, is what I want. And then I've got my meeting notes on this tab down here. And then you feel your boots, you type away during the meeting, making notes as you wish you don't need to save anything in will note it just saves automatically when you create a a meeting or an appointment you can sometimes have things running into each other so if i go back to the week view for example um let's just create an appointment so i'll just call it test for now so that's nine o'clock to nine thirty save and close and then this is going to be 9.30 to 10 and I'll call that testing so there is no space between these two meetings and if you have to physically go to these meetings you want some time to walk between the two venues so what you can do in Outlook is if I go back into options you can put a delay on on the calendar on the meetings so shorten the appointment meetings so I'll tick that so you've got to either end early or start late so i'll leave it on end early and if the meeting is less than one hour it's going to be ending five minutes early or if it's more than one hour ten minutes i click ok to that that's all i want to change and then if i double click into that that still says nine o'clock to nine thirty that's okay and if i double click on this one that still says 9.30, so let's just create another one. So I'll call this tested. So there you go, look. There's a five minute early mark. And then if I do one straight after it, 11.25, let's call that Steve. Okay, so you've now got a gap between that particular meeting you can just about see it there so you can increase that if you so wish but that's basically to allow you to physically move from point a to point b okay so that's all i want to talk about on this so hopefully you enjoyed that and i'll see you on the next one